Now, let's discuss how sample weights are used in both model train and scoring. So almost every classifier or regressor model from SQL lab library has sample weight parameter in fit method. So we uh, quite often see uh, this magical uh, combination of letters, which is called fit x, x and y. But actually there is a third parameter, which is called sample weight, which is quite actually uh, misused by many um, machine learning engineers, which is extremely important, especially in financial machine learning. Actually, uh, lots of score functions such, such as accuracy score, log loss, F1 score, also have the sample weight parameter. So if we take a look at the documentation in Escalon, we can see that sample weight uh, um, by the default equals, equals to none, meaning that the algorithm gives the same importance to each sample, meaning that the, each sample has the equal importance to the algorithm. But in financial machine learning, it is absolutely not the case. And let's take a look at the, at the example why it is not. So let's imagine a series of trades which yield following results. Plus 2%, plus 1%, minus 7%, plus 2%, plus 2, plus two and minus 1. So if you find the sign of our trade uh, and uh, put it into the accuracy score function, you could mean that plus trade equals to one and uh, negative trade equals to zero, meaning that we did not succeed to trade in, in a positive way. The accuracy of our model will be 62%, which is relatively high. But what is about your PNL account? The final value of your PNL account, if you sum up all these trades, will be minus nine. Because if you sum up uh, all these returns, you, you end up with minus one. So that's why you need to take into account not only your accuracy score in terms of how many trades you man managed, uh, how many trends, uh, trends you managed to predict in a correct way, but also what is the effect and impact on your PNL uh, of each trade. Because if you manage to predict many small trends, but you misclassify big trends, at the end, you will end up with a bankrupt case. So if you put sample weights into your accuracy score, in this example, your score, your score will drop significantly, which actually re reflects the true state of your trading account. And that's why it is so important to use uh, sample weights uh, in both scoring and training the model. So if you use sample weights when you train the model, you tell explicitly the model that, please take a look at these samples because they generated uh, huge uh, returns or losses. So you put the absolute values of the returns, for example, and in this case, the model would, will take uh, more, uh, will put more attention on the samples, and as a result, it will better pretend those trends which have significant impact on your trading account. So there are three commonly used sample weighting schemes which are used in financial machine learning. So as we have discussed, the first type of sample weights uh, are so-called returns-based uh, weights, where we uh, use returns uh, as a sample weight. The second type of uh, sample weights are, are called time-based. So sometimes you would like to give the most uh, of um, your attention to the most recent samples, because at the end, when you finish your research, you would like to your uh, you, you would like your model to be trained. Um, uh, on the most recent data, but still uh, you don't want to um, constrain yourself in the number, number of data points. So that's why you can use time decaying weights by setting the higher values uh, of sample weights to the most recent data and lower weights to uh, the oldest data. And the third type of, uh, of sample weights, we have already discussed that in our labeling uh, lecture, are T values based. So if you label your data set by using trans-scanning labels, you can use the absolute values of T values to make your model pay more attention to clean and strong trends comparing to ranging periods. So in this case, your model can, uh, um, uh, can classify uh, clean, tr clean trends with, with uh, higher accuracy. 